or so it seemed, as darkness loomed, our confidence was loosed. Our Lord was dead, he hung his head, on cursed tree while bruised. Our eyes revealed, our friend had lost, our Lord, his life had been taken. But no one takes the Son of Man's life unless by him it was given. This silence now struck the land from Jew to Gentile home. And all who once believed in him now prayed but felt alone. Our hope was dead in a borrowed grave. We wept at what a loss. If, if only, only we knew, knew what God would do for love, love at what a cost. I think the moon and stars leaned in that night. We were sitting by the table side, and sitting in this awkward silence because my friend just told me I was going to forget him in just a few hours, and I thought he was crazy. <laughs> Paranoid. There was no way I'd walk this far just to forget his face. We are fighting on the same side. And I remember the sorrow in his eyes. When he said that one of his other friends who shared the same table side would betray him. All for the flip of some coin in the palm of his hand. And I wonder how many in this hearing have exchanged our beloved for a few things we can fit in the palm of our hands. And he went out. As was his custom. Customary seclusion to the Mount of Olives where he would share serious succulent silence as he looked intently in our eyes and spoke. Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And I was tempted to take his words and assume he was surely overcompensating for a lack of obedience of his own disciples, but, but surely, surely I was, I was missing, missing something. something. My Lord. Because the sweat that dropped down from the temple on the side of his face was blood red as his earnestness in prayer led him to wrestle with the plans of the Lord. My Lord. He was growing weary in prayer, yet strengthened as if some heavenly being had just picked him up off his knees. My Lord. I remember being startled. My friends and I were awakened to his voice, speaking. Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. But I wouldn't be lying. If I said that I wasn't tempted into thinking this just wasn't that big of a deal. And I would be lying if I said there aren't many times I'm not tempted just to look at God and think he's just not that big of a deal. He was betrayed that night. Coin bought Judas delivered my Lord right into the hands of the chief priests and officers, finding no fault but their own, while guided by a man who betrayed his master with a kiss. This kiss. To be a sign of respect, but in retrospect, probably sounded more like a hiss of a, a snake, snake in a, a garden. garden. And what they didn't know was the fruit this time was God man Jesus. And he allowed himself to be picked by man so that in their bite they no longer have to taste death for their wickedness. And so surely he did this. And they mocked him. As the crowd gathered by the fire, moments after Jesus' arrest, Peter sat down among the crowd, hoping he would go unnoticed. But a woman saw him and said this man was with him woman i do not know him no you are one of them i don't know who one of them are but it's not me i know this man was with him certainly you know nothing about who i am i do not know him and immediately the rooster crow and he wept bitterly remembering his friend jesus now he told him he would forget him before the rooster's crow would end oh how he treated his friend and they mocked him folded lies into the truth, trying incessantly to trap him in his words. But Jesus was the word, the word that was with God, the word that was God, the word that held the weight of the full presence of God. But the high priests and scribes and assembly of elders gathered together with one thing in mind, to eliminate this so-called king and wash their hands of the mess he had made. Muddied opinions and money laundered politics divided the crowd with his life at stake. The allegations piled high and Pilate battled the sounds of the people saying, Let us crucify Barabbas. I have found no guilt in this man, Jesus. Yet unfazed by his offer, their shouts grew deafened. Crucify him! Deafened to the truth. Crucify him! Pilate succumbed. Crucify him! He delivered, he released. Barabbas into the people, and he delivered Jesus, the guiltless God-man, into their bloodthirsty hands. The weeping women watched him 
weakly walk to his death, and despite what they may have desired, they couldn't stop it from happening. Like they couldn't have stopped him from changing water into wine, and they couldn't have stopped him from giving sight to the blind. They couldn't have stopped who he was or why he came. And I don't know if they even would have tried. Not then anyways, but now he, he wasn't, wasn't supposed, supposed to, to die. die. They pierced his hands and his feet and mocked him, saying, Some king of the Jews, some savior you are, who will save you? What do you do with a supposed savior now hanging helpless on a tree, the breath that once spoke life now losing his own? Is this how it was supposed to be? They cast lots to divide his garments, while he cast death to divide his grace. Hard-hearted soldiers playing games, unaware of the weight of this day. And now we watched as hope was lost, the final moments on that tree. It is finished, was his cry, but he was supposed to be our king. And while we gripped tightly to all we wanted him to be, he loosened his grip in a surrender we could not see. But surely I was missing something. There was a sunrise that day in the morning to give life. And then the sun was raised at noon, but this time to give life. And nature opposed the opposers of the sun. So when the sun fell in death, the sun fell in step, and there was darkness. Darkness in the land that matched the darkness in their hearts. And they didn't know how much they needed the light. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. He wasn't supposed to die, but, but surely, surely we were missing something. something.